Hey friends, in this video we went ahead and grabbed the recorder and uh, took advantage of our session with uh, Eric over at Continental Tires. He's uh, the distributor in Florida, uh, was a wealth of knowledge for helping us pick the right tire and set the pressures to head out for our first track day in two years. So we wanted to share this all with you. Make sure and hit up uh, their Facebook pages, YouTube channels, all the links will be in the description. A uh, special shout out to Continental too for getting us uh, connected and uh, enjoy the lesson. You know, Eric, uh, I want to say this to the viewers because you, you and I spent, uh, oh gosh, we spent a good couple hours at Daytona this year talking and we went way off in the left field. And I think the thing that had me go, oh, this guy's a rare one, is you come actually from aviation. So you Correct. went aviation first and then brought in a motorcycle, which I wish the entire motorcycle industry would flip that because the, the as an industry as a whole, the level of, of competence and, and value and everything would go through the roof. But, you know, we can't have that whole conversation, and I'd give anything to have it recorded because I think people would have loved it. Uh, but I just want to say I've been really impressed with you, and I could, and now that I work in aviation, I can just constantly, when we talk, feel your level of uh, intent and, and professionalism and care for the customer, and I just want to say thank you. Uh, yeah, To welcome. my fans, this is a very brief little thing where I just wanted to uh, – to give something back to Eric and, and his shop and, and what he does because he's been instrumental in, in teaching us and, and bringing me to a level of confidence. I feel like I'm going to go out and ride this bike this weekend and I'm, I'm feeling really comfortable about it and you're part of the equation. So I just want to say thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I hope it goes really well. I know you're going to love the tires. Hey, Eric, how you doing? Pretty good. Man, we are getting close on the uh, track bike here with uh, – the Continental Tires, we got hooked up from you. I really appreciate you uh, spend some time with us before on on what tires we should use. But I'd, I'd been telling my viewers for quite some time I wanted to interview you, and and uh, you still had some uh, information for us about tire pressures. I thought, you know what, let's just grab the recorder and and uh, introduce you, and uh, then you can go ahead and keep teaching me. How's that sound? Sure, sure, sounds good to me. Awesome. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and your business and why we should listen to you? <laughs> Well, we're here in Daytona Beach. We've been, have been distributing the Continentals for about two and a half years now. We've been doing trackside service and support for road racing tires for the better part of seven, eight years. Um, you know, we we got involved with Continental. We tested their product, and it's 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 really really good. And um, we've learned a lot about it. We've gotten some good results here in Florida with the Florida series FMRRA and you know we've learned a lot about the tires we know how they work we know the ins and outs of making them work and um yeah we're always happy to help spread the good word on you know how to properly use the different the different models and compounds and you know there's several variations that they come in so it's it's really important to, to get the right tire for the right application give you the best results yeah i really i really appreciate that first time we were talking some of the questions you were asking me about you know uh well what's your riding style you know what level are you so on and so on and and uh and then you for our audience out there too it's going to be our first time trying out slicks too so <laughs> we're super stoked about that but we're going to start this weekend with the uh, connie attacks we have the twos and I, I saw the fours are out now, too. And you had posted on your page a really good uh, video that Jeff put together from Continental about the differences. Right, correct. So, you know, not to take everybody's time up twice, I'm just going to go ahead and link that video down below, too. But there's, uh, I, I would say from what I've seen from Continental so far is they're they're big on education, too, and, and trying to get that user the right information so they can uh, pick the right tire and use it correctly. Yeah, they're really good about that. It's really important, you know, is, is it primarily street? Is it street with a little track? Is it, you know, more frequent track with some street mixed in? Is it is it track only, race only? You know, there's they make several different levels that, that really accommodate all those different forms of sport riding. So yeah, it it's, like uh, it. you know, pro proper fit, proper size, proper compound, and you're you're doing good out of the gate, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> So let's let's start uh, kind of digging into what we want to just kind of capture for this short little video. And to our viewers, we're going to do more stuff in the future. So if you have any questions, comment below, like uh, with whatever your question is, and Eric and I will take a look at uh, one of our next calls to try and address those. 
Um, and then I, I won't forget at the end of this video, I'm going to have all of Eric's uh, contact information too if you want to reach out to him directly and uh, especially support him uh, buying some tires. So, and, and you do a lot of other things too. You're a full suspension service, dyno shop. I mean, what am I Correct. missing? Correct. Yeah, we do dyno tuning, suspension setup, bike building, oil changes, you know, all the in-between service work. So pretty much full, full service. We can do uh, start to finish as, oh. as well as taking it to the track and getting you set up and turning some laps. Yeah, I wish I was in Florida to say that, right? Um, so here we are. Let's get to, uh, to our project here. So I got your, your County Attack 2s, uh, the street, uh, track day tire. And my question to you is what tire pressure should I run? What do I need to think about? I know we, we're not going to dive into a whole bunch of s suspension stuff or anything. The video would be, you know, six days long. But right. I'm going to use some just baseline settings uh, to, to get me started. But what, what should I do for pressures? Tell me about that. For track use with the Race Attack 2 Street, we usually recommend right around 28 rear hot and 32 to 34 front, depending on rider feel. Um, there's a window there, of course, with any, any tire, um, that particular compound is, is designed. It does not, does not need warmers to work properly. It does heat up really quickly. Uh, it, it provides, um, a lot of, uh, leeway as far as, you know, an entry level track rider. Um, it gives them a lot of, of, um, ability to Can you open that? Oh, focus yeah. on riding without the intricacies of using a slick, which require lots of heat, specific pressure. Um, the target for that tire, we'd recommend 28 rear hot, 32 to 34 front. And, you know, do not need to use warmers. You can go out on a cold pressure. And the, the, the key to maximizing grip, longevity, feel is to make sure that you check the tire pressure when you come in from your first session or second session. Um, as the tire heats up, the carcass flexes, generates heat, um, heats up the re the wheel until the wheel is fully heat soaked. You're going to have some growth. So it's a good idea to check off the track. That's, that's really key. As, as soon as you come off the track, don't wait, don't put the kickstand down or put it on your, your rear stand and talk to your buddies and high five. Like, you know, have someone there that's trained with a, a good accurate tire pressure gauge and go hey as soon as i roll in please check my pressures and, and you know write it down and you can create a little log you know if you're going to be serious about it you can track your pressures and then you know you know well i went out cold tire 28 and i came in it was 31 so i i adjusted down to 28 and then you know as you do that throughout the day the the, the pressures will stabilize and you'll find that when you come in check adjust and then go back out and you come in again, it'll be, it'll be consistent. Awesome. Well, I was just kind of popping up those, uh, well, I'm getting crazy echo there. I was popping up those, uh, Moto D tire warmers I have, cause you had me curious if I bought the better ones that had a high and low and I did. And you had really made a deal when we talked before that if I'm going to use warmers to make sure and use on these street tires to use them on the low setting. Correct. For someone that is I going would... to. Yeah. I would recommend a lower temperature in the, the neighborhood of 130 to 150 Fahrenheit um, as a as a hot pressure hot pressure temp hot temperature for the checking the pressure. Gotcha. gotcha. Uh, when you move to the slicks, you can run them on high. You know that compound is really designed for higher temperature conditions. So you you know you're not going to over temp the slick. On the Race Attack 2 Street, they are a little more sensitive to those higher temperatures. So run it on low, you get some stability um, with the pressure and some more consistency with the tire wear. So it, it's permissible. It's just, you know, uh, don't over temp the tire. You know, that to me <laughs> makes sense because we've talked so many times. I think that originally when I was even deciding to purchase tire warmers and I knew that I was going to, you know, do slicks and DOT tires, I'm, I'm just thinking backwards now and thinking because you shared that before, I'm sure that's why I went ahead and bought a dual temperature, uh, uh, tire warmer. And I just think there's all those little things like that. Like 
people just don't know, right? Like, oh, a tire warmer's a tire warmer. I'll just throw that thing on. And I mean, what you're saying is you could have it too hot and actually ruin the tire or dramatically shorten its life or anything from just Correct. using the wrong tire warmer. And you're gonna, you know, you're gonna alter its performance in a negative way if it's if it's too hot. Yeah, you know, wow. so the average track day guy wants to go out and, and have a low maintenance, a low maintenance um, tire it's a phenomenal product for that. However, you just have to, you know, you, you don't want to throw a, a high temp, 180 temp tire warmer on there, cook the thing, and then go out and go, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, you know, it didn't feel like I thought it should, and it's, it can be directly related to too much heat. You know, I, I sit here and I think of how many times I was probably lucky, you know, doing track days or racing of just going out and throwing a leg over a bike and not learning all these details. But the one thing I want to encourage people to think about is there's so much more information today and people willing to help. You you had made a point to me earlier, like one of the things that you do is you get like a bunch of guys to buy a bunch of tires from you and then you'll actually go out and help them right at the track one-on-one. Like the- right. So when we get like, you know, new riders or new to sport bike riding, new to track riding, new to racing, new to continental, we, we prefer, you know, the first – the first time that they run the tires at the track that we are attending so that if there are any questions or any technical type details that can be overlooked, it could really alter the outcome of the experience. You know, we'd like to be there to assist them. And usually if there's a little issue, it's, it's a pressure, it's a temperature thing. It's a, you know, it's just a little suspension thing, a click here or there, and we can get them set up pretty well. So, um, it's just part of the service, you know, it's, it's not an inexpensive hobby. So you want to try to maximize right. the outcome. You know, you want to have a good experience. You want your customers to have a good experience so that they, they want to continue and be comfortable. You know, tires are the cheapest insurance. So, right. Uh, right. you know, Oh man, oh, man. Um, I am getting a terrible oh, echo. Are you hearing that on your end? No. Okay, good. Maybe it'll sound fine, but, uh, well, we got the we got the rear. How about the front? Uh, thirty-two to thirty-four psi, same pressure. I mean, sorry, same temperature. So, thirty-two to thirty-four, depending on feel, and one hundred and forty degrees or so. Or you can go out without warmers and just run them. You know, ambient temp, you'll be okay. You just got to make sure after you come in and generate some heat that you adjust accordingly. Yeah. And I, I want to make this point that we're talking about, you know, 180, 190 rear, you know, 120 front. If someone's doing like supermoto tires or, you know, in, anything else, these tire pressures that, and what we're talking about are specific to we're going to go do a track day on these tires and these sizes. I just can get that confirmation because I know somebody's going to get a hold of me with a, a, you know, a GSX-R 750 instead of a 600 or a thousand. And they're going to say, well, what about my bike? But for what you're talking about, it's those same pressures j- just for those tire sizes and what we're doing. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Every, every situation is different. Every tire is different. Every application is a little bit different. So, and then you've always got the, the flyer, you know, you've got the guy in left field. that's like, Oh, I run these at, you know, X, Y, and Z. And you go, really? That works. And he goes, yeah. And you know, it could be a minor adjustment. It could be a setup deal. It could be a preference, you know, it could be the way he rides or it could be the a- applications a little bit different from the norm. So this instance, what we're talking about now is specific to, you know, entry level to moderate. I know you've raced in the past, but it's been several years. So this is your first time on the track in quite some time. That's why we selected this tire to get you started before you jump headfirst into a slick. So this bike, you know, the conditions, um, the ability and whatnot, this is, it's all specific to these pressures in this instance. You know, you had also asked me about where I was from, and we talked about we're in Phoenix, and, um, you know, that's something to consider, too. The, the one thing I want our viewers to think about is, like, you can't watch a video one time or read one blog and think everything's all figured out. Like, it's it's really a, a working progression to learn what's happening, what's it doing, and I think uh, I got my friend here that's helping out today taking notes, and we're going to get serious about it. Like we're super excited. We spent all this money on tires, suspension, bike, like we're going to try and for the first time, uh, go out there and see what happens. And 
I, from talking to you before, and you can kind of add to this, but you had made a big point too about don't make huge changes. Like if you're going to even click your adjusters or you're going to change a tire pressure, you're going to mess with it. Like you, you don't, just for our viewers, you don't go five PSI. I mean, you play around in like right. a, a couple or something, you know? Yeah, small changes, incremental changes. And if you've got the ability and the time and you've got someone with you to help record some of that stuff, you know, you can start a log and then as you progress and you, you travel through the process of becoming a faster, more proficient rider, um, you can look back on some of that stuff and you can actually use it to your advantage. You can go, well, you know, I, I took these notes on ambient conditions, pressures, um, temperatures, and, you know, you can use it to gauge um, different scenarios, you know, if you're going out and you know, some racers, they, they get sidetracked and they don't put the warmers on fast enough so the tire's not quite as hot as they'd want it to be. They're going to have to compensate with some pressure going out, knowing they're going to generate a lot of heat during the race or the qualifying or what it might be. You know, they might have to go out a little bit lower. And if you've got notes that reference what kind of growth you're getting um, under various conditions, you can use those notes to, to apply that in a very constructive manner. In, in various conditions so it's you know it's a lot to take in it's a lot for a new rider you know and we're not here to try to overwhelm anyone we just you know want to just try to set the thought process you know um it's there's no set it and forget it for anyone it's, this doesn't i read here i read there i mean i have i was talking to someone recently and they told me about some stuff they read on a forum and i said well be careful with that you know it's you know, you, you got to listen to a lot of different sources and, and listen to people that have done it for a living for several years. It's probably your best bet. But um, I would I would like yeah. to add to that that you also it's very hard to have one conversation ever have anything very productive come out of it. Like if if you know my fans out there, I want to say you need to find your tire distributor, find your coach or whatnot, and build a relationship. Because if you go from one coach or one manu tire seller and, you, and you're bouncing all over the place, all you're going to do is get a bunch of opinions and get confused. I know that's been my experience. What's really funny on my last R6 uh, was an 06. I rode at Buttonwillow in California, and I hadn't rode since 2015, so it had been a three-year period. And I went out, and I was really sketchy. I ran off the track right away. I was nervous, and, and I just thought, this bike handles terrible. I had you know, full owns, front and rear. I mean, it was, it was, a, it was a great bike and it had nothing to do with the bike it was all me like not being comfortable on it and what i should have done is really went and looked at some things but right. what i did is i fought it i had a terrible morning the bike was all over the place i i wasn't putting the tire warmers on soon enough a lot of things you're saying and what happens i just plain got lucky i didn't crash but by the you know by noon i was rocking and rolling and back up to a better pace and i remember turning to uh to my buddy Lance Holtz, I don't know if you know him from uh, back in the day of Sport Writer Magazine. You don't know Lance? Well, he, he came and no. uh, he, he was with me. Him and his wife were with me. And he, uh, uh, Nick, you know Nick Iantosh from Champions Writing School? I'm sure you've seen him. Uh, yeah, I do, yes. So yes. Him, him and Lance started Sport Writer Magazine. They were from motorcyclists okay. and started Sport Rider. But uh, it's so funny because all these publications, God, they've been gone for so long now. But, but anyway, so I felt like, wow, I got this superstar. And he's kind of watching things and being like, yeah, you're, you're a little loose here and there. Well, what happened was I basically just got lucky enough not to crash. But then by the time I was riding the bike where it was comfortable, the faster I rode it, I couldn't believe like by noon I was going, this thing is awesome. It just sticks and I could turn it and go. But it was a horrible morning to like get to that point and it was really right. all it was really all my fault as a as an owner and just taking things for granted like oh yeah i'll just go out there and throw a leg right man I didn't check nothing you know it was terrible i remember some uh somebody even at one point checked tire pressures they're like what the hell are you doing you know you got like you know 38 in the rear you know i was like yeah Holy. yeah so I, it's I, really over it's really easy to overlook stuff if people get anxious they get excited yeah you know it's like mindset is a lot of is a lot of it, you know, we're going to go off on a little bit of a tangent, but I, I can almost walk through the pits some days and, and tell you who's going to have a bad day. You know, um, the guy that's anxious, he's rushed. He's, you know, he's 
throwing stuff and yelling at the wife and kicking the dog and you're like dude you need to like calm down and and just get your mind in the right place there's so much to it it's extremely technical and i think that's what pulls a lot of us into it like-minded people we accept the challenge we look forward to it we go well what's going to throw me off today what can i make better today and you've got to really have an objective approach to be successful you know so one thing i'll add is um the equipment that that did the riders select to to check tire pressure? It needs to be good quality. Um, there's several options out there. Um, without bringing any specific brands into it, you know, do a little research. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to, to to help them. You know, we've we've gone through different brands of pressure gauges, and we've we've kind of landed on one that's been really good to, for us. You know, we've sold lots of multiple brands and one in particular stands out so go um, ahead if go ahead and share if you don't mind um i you know we really recommend long acre products um their mid to high level gauges um are really really good quality we've had good luck with them i'm not saying that there'll never be a failure but you know i've got a gauge that's going on two years and it's still accurate um and that being said you know when you do invest in a 60 80 hundred dollar gauge just two things i recommend one is um, keep it in some sort of case during transport. And two, um, don't loan it out. <laughs> um, and I'm not trying to sound, so you know, true. selfish or whatnot, but, you know, race tires are the better part of 400 a set. And if you're going out there with a the gauge is two to three pounds off, not only is it unsafe for you, but it's going to negatively affect your experience and your tire wear and everything else. So um, it can get really expensive really quickly when you, you know, have a an, an what I like to call a, uh, or what my buddy Nate Kern likes to call it, mm, yeah. agricultural experience, you know, uh, off the side of the track. So, you know, to really think about that. Put some thought into it. A lot of guys like to, to, to buy the the nicest exhaust and the, the best tuning and, the you know, even the best suspension. But then they pick up a 895 gauge at Walmart on their way to the track and it throws their whole weekend off. So it's it's worthwhile to do some research, you know, purchase a good gauge, put it in a little box. You know, when you check your pressures and you're holding the bike and you're trying to jump on and get on the track, don't, don't throw it at the folding chair, sit next to your bike and then you miss and it lands on the ground. Like, you know, have someone there to help you if you can, or, you know, just treat it, treat it like it's, you know, uh, something that's as fragile as it really is, you know, and we had recently had an experience where a guy came in and he's, He's an expert racer here in Florida, and he does really well. And he came in, and he's cursing and swearing, and something's wrong with the tires. And I said, Jason, you've been ridden on these tires for months. Like, there's obviously something wrong. And we figured out that he his gauge, being a good quality gauge, it was a, a glycerin-filled gauge that had pressurized itself and thrown his readings three and a half pounds off. Wow. So once we equalized the pressure in the gauge, he started getting accurate readings again, and that fixed his problem. So it's it's really easy to overlook something that small that can make your day go that south, you know. So just details. You just got to be on top of the details and, you know, surround yourself with people that are the same way, and they'll, you know, keep an eye on each other, you know. Eric, I know you, I, you're kind of being uh, humble yeah. about products and brands, but... Oh, I'm just afraid this audio is going to be terrible. I'm getting this terrible echo. But um, will you go ahead and send me the links uh, to the gauges you sell so I could just uh, p- pass people back on you? Because I'm going to have your website. I'm going to have your phone number. Um, sure. uh, I think I need to get one for myself. I know that I, I definitely don't have a, a super high-end gauge. I'm looking at one, that, but it's old. Um, I don't think it would be a bad idea for me to get one ordered from you as well. And then, There's uh, nothing wrong either with an old one necessarily. Even a good one, it's good to to check your gauge against a couple others that are really good. Or if your local tire guy, if there's a tire guy at the track that has something right. that you can, like a benchmark gauge that you can check it against, that's strongly recommended. So when sorry I say to, old, I'm talking uh, 20 years. 
<laughs> and it's been used by techs and you know what it's like having employees sometimes so uh i'm not let's not even have that conversation uh, but yeah well hey man uh you're gonna you're gonna text me over like just a list of all your socials your contacts your everything everybody uh, i will have all those links in the video description below same thing with facebook instagram all that stuff here's what i'd ask everybody i'd ask you to also follow along on your page I appreciate your time. I mean, you're putting all this, you know, free information out. Uh, Con- Continental's been instrumental to work with as well. I'm still anxious to uh, chat with Jeff, too. He seems like an unbelievably knowledgeable guy from uh, Continental there, too. And uh, we're looking forward to it. Just want to wish us luck for this weekend. And we probably better finish uh, putting the forks together and building the bike. And we still got a lot of work ahead of ourselves. Race bike life. It's only like it's only Friday night, right? You know, burning the midnight oil. You know, yeah, yeah. pull an all nighter now so you can get some rest tomorrow night. That's right? the plan. That's the plan. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I appreciate you so much. Uh, thank you for taking this yeah. time. I know we've been wanting to do this for quite a while. And uh, next time, if we're ever hanging out, Daytona, wherever, we just need to turn a camera on, at least capture whatever, because we have great conversations, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, let's do it. It sounds like fun. I'm looking forward to it. If anyone has any specific questions about any other models, you know, like specifically to any race compounds, slicks, you know, um, if there's enough demand, if we need to do another video or something, you know, I'd be down for that too, so... Yeah, I think um, just yeah. just between talking to you and then, you know, you had seen that post where I talked to Dan Kyle and whatnot. And I think probably the safest bet for me uh, this weekend is just to go out and get familiar again. All the conversation we had earlier today is like, I should just stick on these Continental Street tires and just get familiar again. There's plenty of other track days that I'm going to get out to and I can notch that up. But, uh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I just released a video on balancing too. I'd love to see your feedback on that too. So take a look at it. Tag I got through one. about while well, I was waiting for you earlier. I was, uh, oh. I watched about eight, nine minutes of it. It's really good. Okay. It's a lot of good, it's a lot of good information in there. It's very correct. I mean, a lot of people, uh, they discount static balancing and it's really the proper way to do it. You know, they, they think if it's not done on a dynamic balancer, that it's not accurate enough, and that's couldn't be further from the truth. You know, it's static balancing is the is the best way. So, dude, you watch all the YouTube certified technicians are going to be beating that up here within the week. You know, <laughs> it's true. It's true. You know, um, I've heard it straight from the horse's mouth. I talked to a company that made them, and I said, "Hey, is this really?" And this is years ago. This is long before I did trackside stuff and everything else. And I said, "Hey, is it really?" necessary and he goes you know the width of these wheels really isn't even significant they're not wide enough to really fully benefit from a static balancer there's really no need you know um so and i've balanced thousands of wheels just like that right right thousands. so what i hope i did in that video is just if anything like if i was going to tell anybody that thought they knew how to balance tires watch like the first two minutes that tip where i talk about putting the cones in the wheel and and what bearing to make sure like to me that's where all the airs made i don't know how many times i had technicians over the year where i just you know thought they learned it in school or whatnot and a customer would come back with a complaint god dang you put a tire on this thing shaking like crazy and you go well maybe a weight got knocked off or whatever we got to the point where on our work orders i'd make the text write down how much weight exactly they put on the bike right so you know, uh, three tenths or, or excuse me, uh, three quarters of an ounce or whatever, whatever, you know what I mean? And yeah, I would, I would keep having to go back and find these tires. Like, why is this unbalanced? You just did it. Well, I don't know. Must have been the balancer must be bad. Like, well, what the hell goes bad on a gravity balancer? You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, every time I was training a new tech, it was always that they didn't get it on the cones and that's wobbling all over the place. You know? And so I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm just, you know, all the years of teaching, I did a really, uh, uh, a really good job, I think, of teaching like, hey, this is so important. This step is really important because if you mess it up here, everything else is going to go south, you know. One of the things that we had to do to, to expedite the process at the track is we had to um, acquire a set of um, what I like to call axles, but they're, they're, they're like rods that are the same diameter is the internal diameter of the bearing set so i've got seven of them 
and it covers about 90 percent of what's out there so we can do it with oh, wow. with cush drives we can do it with captive spacers you know captive spacers are the biggest issue like at the sure. track if you're trying to use cones you can put those cones in as tight as you want but the captive spacers ride in the seals right, right. and the wheel just flops around like on the on the rod and it, you can't get an accurate balance for anything so right. we yeah. had to go to that method just to save time you know um and popping captives out it's a pain in the butt and the customers don't like it so yeah um that's yeah. another method but it's it's really specialized i mean unless you're doing like you know dozens of wheels a weekend I, I don't really see the need to go outside of using cones the cones if you use them properly as you demonstrated the cones are are 100 percent accurate there's there's no issue and making sure they're tight is very important yeah man that's yeah. a great yeah. idea on the yeah. axles yeah. i mean for for a racer that's running one model it wouldn't be that big a deal you know you run r6 man hit up you know find a set of you know act you know good axles off ebay or whatever and then they you know rock and roll it's a great we, idea. we found a um we found a um you know some broad stock and just had it turned down oh that's even a great idea too so then you know you can buy 10 feet 12 feet of that stuff cut it into sections turn it down and then you've got a whole set you know yeah did you see those did you see the video i did the other night the jack sands that i made yeah it was really neat yeah Dude, that was that was the best like forty bucks ever. I swear, it was a little sense that we've been working on the bike. The only the only you know I, you, there's always the afterthought, right? Um, but you got to be really intentional not to like shove the bike if you're torquing anything. Uh, I don't remember what we were torquing on. Oh, we were torquing on the rear axle. Oh no, the counter shaft sprocket, and it was like ah, oh, you gotta you gotta be careful. They weren't like super super stable, but it got the job done. Especially nice for. Uh, uh, changing out the shock so it was fun yeah all right brother yep. well i'm gonna let you go because we could wrap all day and i know you've got a full schedule i know you were telling a bunch of stuff you got yep. going on but just wish us luck sunday um i know yeah. it's o- i know it's only if, a track if, day while you're out there fun if you got any questions just let me know okay while you're out there riding all right man i appreciate you all right all right yeah, thanks for putting the time in and um we hope that you're reintroduction to track riding is is a success well i can't wait to ride on these continentals you gotta remember that you know I, I don't think i've stressed it in this video but i sold i don't know how many of these to my old business partner clay jensen and i at sioux City power sports when they first came out they were they were just crazy popular i think they introduced them at a pretty low introductory price you know so the sport guy by guys sport bike guys were eating them up guys and gals but i never rode on them and then, uh, geez, what, three years ago, I built that RC-51 with them and was all excited, mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, we're going to do this. And then th- th- that never got rode. I ended up moving. So this is literally my first time, and uh, I can't wait. Yeah, it'll be fun. Cool. You got, once you get settled in, you got to bring that thing out here this winter, and we'll do some track days down here in Florida. Yeah, sounds great. You know, you can always come here, too. <laughs> it, it might work out. Yeah. It might work out. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. At least yeah, we're, bo- we're a... both away from the snow, so there's not an easy sell either way on that, you know. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. You have a great weekend. I- I'm sure I'll reach All out right. to you. All right, Shane. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye.